Okay, it is October 26th, 2023, a Thursday. In case you missed it, there is a new Speaker of the House of Representatives. This guy's going slow in front of me. Mike Johnson out of Louisiana. I think it's the first Louisiana Speaker of the House ever. He, um... Yeah, I think 220 votes. I think he got all the Republicans. Every Republican voted for him, so he is the new speaker. And his first order of business, as he said, is to, I don't know if it's going to be money, if it's just going to be a resolution to uh, stand with Israel. Which was a little disappointing, because if it is about sending money, I'm not for that. I'm not for uh, any foreign foreign aid. You know, the, the support me wars, this guy's gonna turn, and I'm just gonna go around him. Get the digibug rolling. All right, I got another guy on my butt. Hey, I'm going. I'm not gonna say how fast I'm going. I'm not violating, violating the speed limit. Uh, anyway. All right, but anyway, Mike Johnson, kind of an unknown, not real sure where he's coming from. He did apparently support the uh, overturning of the 2022 election. He kind of said it might have been rigged. He said, you know, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what he stands for. But his, uh, he did say something about Israel um, and, you know, supporting their ally in the Middle East. Hopefully it's not with $105 billion, as Joe Biden wants, but that's supposedly for, well, it was for, first it was for Ukraine, and now it's for Ukraine and Israel, and now he's thrown in, well, Ukraine, Israel, and the border, and the border here in the U.S. So trying to make it more palatable to create another $100 plus billion to send overseas, maybe they'll give $5 billion toward the wall in the south of this country. We'll see. But again, I just want to I want to look at what the uh, actions are of this new House Speaker, rather than the words. Um, he's at this point trying to unite the House, so you might say a few things that maybe you don't believe in, but it gets everybody rallying behind you. So we'll see what happens, I guess. November 17th is the big deadline when the government shuts down, so we can now create money since we have a Speaker of the House. We can raise bills out of the House of Representatives. America's back, baby. All right, and another big news overnight, there was a shooting in Maine, the state of Maine, a small town. I think it was, I wouldn't say small town, 40,000 people maybe, and then a, a sister city or a sister town. Um, somebody went in and shot up a bowling alley. It was youth night, Wednesday night. Um, there was another location, some entertainment complex or something that he went in and shot up. The news coming out right now, you know, there's over 20 people dead apparently. So the, the suspect, who they think it is, they have some video, they think it is a, a, guns, a gun instructor in the Army Reserve, I think it is, or in the reserves of some sort. I'm not sure he went active duty or not. But um, somebody that, you know, the person that you would think would be the safest person to have a gun. And that's probably going to be a narrative. Well, even the people we think are safe aren't safe to carry weapons, you know, because look at that instance that happened in Maine. We need to ban all weapons. That may be the narrative. The bigger narrative to me is um, there's allegations. Again, this is early, you know, what's coming out. It's kind of early. Allegations that, um, you know, he was having mental issues, said that he was hearing voices. Now, I don't know how verified this is. This is in the mainstream media, so who knows? But it would not surprise me. Because in order for someone to do this, if you look back through history, all these mass shootings, and they don't talk about it, I would be pretty confident that most of these people are on some sort of pharmaceutical drugs. Especially being, um, if he's former military, some sort of post-traumatic stress disorder that's very common. You see it with young kids, the ones that go up and shoot up schools, you know, and they're on some sort of medication and they don't talk about it I would like to know in all these instances instances and especially this instance if he was on some sort of medication if he was being treated with some sort of pharmaceutical that probably had side effects like hey you might hear voices in your head 
You might be suicidal, have suicidal thoughts. You might, uh, you know, have anger issues. More likely than not, that is the case. I don't know for a fact, but if you go back and look and see, I think the key to all these uh, mass shootings, it's the doctors. We need to be investigating, asking questions of the doctors who were treating these people that pulled the trigger because the gun didn't do it. It was the person pulling the trigger. So what was wrong with that person? You don't just go and, you know, massacre a bunch of people unless there's something not right up here. And I've never been on them, seen people on them. I know how hard it is for some people to come off of these pharmaceuticals once they start taking them. Uh, coming off of them can actually be worse than taking them. What's it doing to their brain? What's it doing to their mindset? Are they really hearing voices or at least thinking, you know, there's something's there telling them, directing them to do something? Um, these drugs are very powerful, but we never look at that as the cause. We never look at that as something that might be a contributing factor to these mass shootings. It's always blame the gun. And so that's probably what we'll see. There's going to be a press conference by Joe Biden. He's going to do his false sympathy because, you know, I know loss, you know, this has happened to me. It's all about me, 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 me. I understand because of me, 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 me. We'll probably see something like that. And then the other thing is Congress needs to act. They need to act to stop this devastation. Where you had Maine, I think it was uh, last year, they had 26 murders in the whole state. And then last night, you know, you're close to that in one, one evening. So it's not like it's a problem there, but it'll be a big problem now because you know, all the things I talked about, gun instructor, military, yeah. So I guess we should take the guns away from police officers too, you know, because they're trained. They could snap at any moment, right? Yeah. Always an agenda. All right. Um, crypto market, crypto market still kind of up. Bitcoin's over 34,000, kind of holding steady there. There's rumors again, you know, rumors that the ETF, the, what is it, Electronic Traded Fund, something like that, the acronym for an ETF. Basically, an ETF just makes it easy for big money, institutional money, people in funds to purchase Bitcoin because there's going to be a custodian, and it could be Grayscale, it could be BlackRock, it could be any of these, who is going to hold it because that's the biggest thing with these institutional investors. They like playing in the vampire casino. They don't want to take possession of their money. They trust the system um, because they are the system and they, they want it to, they want it to be, um, they want the assets to be in that system. So it can be one possibly manipulated um, and two easily moved and traded. So, um, the ETF will benefit that institutional money. Now, will that drive the price of Bitcoin up? Yeah, I mean, in theory, it should. If it's a one-to-one -one ETF, in other words, if you buy one Bitcoin, they have to take possession of that Bitcoin on the blockchain with the private key. If that is the case, then yeah, it's a true supply-demand relationship and it should push the price of Bitcoin up because you're going to have many more dollars, unlimited dollars, chasing a limited asset. So price in dollars go up because people want limited asset. Water in desert. Only so many bottles of water in desert. 100 people in desert. 10 bottles of water in desert. What's that do to price of water? Same thing, same concept. However, if you got 10 bottles of water sitting here and then you've got this underwater aquifer that's shooting up to, into an oasis of pure water behind it, it's like, well... How valuable is that water? Just come back, fill it up. Come back, fill it up. Rehypothecate the bottles of water. So uh, that that's it. Just depends, you know. If it's if it's legally, that's the way it's supposed to be, and it's audited to where it's a one to one Bitcoin ETF. The price should go up. I mean, because it's going to soak up dollars. Uh, it's, it's more desired, so people are willing to pay more for it to have it. It's that water in the desert, limited supply. We'll see what happens. There are rumors that it's going to happen um, by the end of October and then some other big players saying, you know, by the end of December uh, this year is kind of the kind of falling into place um, this year. A lot of people are saying that it's that's why the price of Bitcoin is going up because of the ETF and it's Bitcoin's on its own cycle. Crypto's on its own cycle. And I, I mean, that's what I keep saying. It's a four year cycle, give or take a few months. 
Um, but it's just, it's that, um, it's just on a schedule. And that's just what it does. Um, Bitcoin in, I think, April is going to have a halving event to where right now each reward per block, I think it's 6.25 Bitcoin per block every 10 minutes. Well, then it will be, was it 6.25? Yeah, 3.125 then um, Bitcoin per block every 10 minutes in April. Just like Litecoin went through its halving. It was 12 and a half per block. Now it's 6.25 Litecoin per block. So it becomes harder to get. There's fewer coming onto the market. And that tends to push the price up because again, you know, there's, okay, there were 10 bottles of water in the desert, you know, delivered every 10 minutes. Now there's only five delivered every 10 minutes, you know, same kind of concept. And so you're waiting around. Oh, I need another one. I need another one. Well, I've got one over here. It's going to cost you this though. Supply and demand. So crypto, Bitcoin, I mean, they're all on this schedule. I mean, you know, it's dominated by Bitcoin. It was the first mover, you know, it kind of, that's, that's the schedule that it's on really. I think the four year cycle kind of goes with that. Um, but I don't, I really don't think everything that happens in the, in the world, you know, there's a lot of people that say, well, because of this price is going to go up. I mean, I think it's going to do what it's going to do. And then all these other factors just play into it. They just, they feed into it and accelerate it. It's just like, uh, you are who you are. You've got this certain personality, but it might be heightened when you start drinking, you know, it just escalates it. So the same thing, Bitcoin, crypto, it's going to do what it's going to do every four years. And it's just that if there are factors happening at the same time, it may make it go higher or lower in the low parts of it but the cycle still remains the cycle remains the same it's like a led zeppelin type mentality here and crypto zeppelin so right now i guess when you look at the cycle between now and i would say october of 2025 that that's going to be it you're going to see that massive massive run up again don't know when it's going to be it could be march of 2025 it could be january of 2025 but it could be october Maybe even December on an outlier of 2025. But in the next two years, you're going to watch this acceleration. Um, Bitcoin, crypto just going up. Now, do I think that it's going to keep going up like this? I mean, it could if it's a beautiful cycle. But what will probably happen is it'll go up and then you'll have a boom, something. It just depends how highly accelerated it gets. It may it may just keep going like this for the next two years until it just goes zoop and then it goes zoom down again. Um, or be prepared for something like, you know, it goes up and then you have a correction down, you know, an awful, oh my God, you know, it's over kind of thing. And then it goes up. It just depends. It just kind of depends on how things lay out. Um, but it's all built in. It's a clock. It's going to happen. And um, sometime in 2025, you'll be glad that you saved your dying fiat, Federal Reserve note, dollar bills, whatever you want to call them, in something that is becoming more scarce throughout time. Um, you're starting to see the, the little bit of a kickoff to that right now within the crypto market. And you ain't seen nothing yet. But that doesn't mean it goes straight up. Um, you're going to have bumps and little corrections on the way, but the overall trend is up, I think, at this point, between now and the next two years at the worst. Again, I mean, it could it could be January of 2025, and it goes parabolic. It just kind of depends um, where things go, but that's, that's kind of the window. I see it, you know, we're less than probably two years at this point before you see that massive, and you'll, you'll see, you'll see things go up just like this week. I mean, you're going to see things popping off, popping off all over the place. A coin like, or a token, I should say, like Hex, I looked at last week and I mean, it tripled, almost quadrupled in a week in price. I mean, but that's nothing compared to these bull run markets. You'll see a hundred X on some of these coins, you know, a hundred times up. It's just unreal. If you're, you know, it's just, it's just amazing. So if you're an investor, or I should say a trader, if you're looking to make money, I mean, you look at what happened in the last cycle, um, Theta went crazy, you know, it goes from five cents to over 15 bucks. I mean, you know, Hex did the same thing and just thousands of percent return. 
um, those coins just go crazy. And I mean, it's safer to hold Bitcoin, yeah, especially down when market is down. In the bear cycle, it's the safest thing to do is hold Bitcoin. But when you get into that bull cycle, I mean, Bitcoin can't go 100x. We just won't do it. If it goes 10x, it's at 30, you know, over 300,000. 10 times. These other coins, they go 10, 100 times. But it's a risk. I mean, you're putting money in risky things. I mean, they could go to zero too. So it's really your your threshold of pain and, and just excitement level. It depends on how much of a degenerate gambler you are, really. But a lot of, uh, a lot of money can be made in these markets. It's really up to you. I, uh, I like to, I like to not make any money. Um, <laughs> that's why I love Litecoin, baby. You know, my ultimate thing is I just want sound money. I just want money to work. I just want something that's going to work. Um, when, when everything kind of starts falling apart, I want to make sure that what I have in my possession works. And Litecoin is that coin for me. Is that the only thing I hold? No, I like Digibyte too. Same kind of concept. You know, it's, um, a proof of work model that um it is sound money you know that's that's what i want i want a sound money thing and i want something that's useful when i need it i don't want to have any dependencies or depend on second layer stuff you know all that garbage no i want it directly on the blockchain especially privately i want to be able to send it and i can do that with mimble wimble on uh, litecoin i want those features and that's what that's what i like well the price is horrible on litecoin oh it's just terrible in u.s dollar terms yeah i mean you can make that argument um, compared to other coins, but it's not going to zero. I can guarantee you that. And when the true value of it is is found, you think if, if Bitcoin gets an ETF, do you think Litecoin won't get it? It will. So, I mean, if you're looking at institutional money coming in and flowing into something, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. You know, you look at the one that is uh, highly undervalued and is going to do the same thing and have the same money coming into it, so... Much more upside potential if you're looking at it in dollar terms. It will soak up a lot of dollars at some point. There's always the first mover that's got to get things out of the way and kind of bust the door open. But once the door is open, you're going to see probably a Bitcoin Cash ETF, an Ethereum ETF, a Litecoin ETF. You know, the ones that are already kind of the big dogs, you know, that are on PayPal, Venmo, and all the platforms. And they are. So you'll probably see those first. I, You know, again, I don't have a crystal ball. I just know that Litecoin's not going away. 12 years plus running nonstop, never failed. 100% uptime, privacy built in, and mimble wimble, uh, scarce supply, 84 million can exist. That's only four times as many as Bitcoin. So it's a lot faster and a lot cheaper to move too. Never have a problem. So I just look at things that work, that have utility, that have value, that have a finite supply too fixed supply. All right. Rambled off on crypto enough. Do your own research, but just know you've got enough things looking at me around the corner. Um, just know that, um, you've got, um, you've got an opportunity right now to take a little bit of that, that vampire casino money that they're devaluing every day and put it into something that has a, a tremendous amount of potential to attract more of that vampire casino money. But it gives you a it gives you an opportunity to retain some purchasing power as we go through this transition that we're going through right now. Um, you'll have something that will be sought after. And hopefully it's something that can help better your life and get you some freedom so you can check off those freedom boxes in the future. Uh, the time is now. Um, the pain of this, this market, I think, is behind us. We may have one more painful moment going forward. But in the next two years, if you are an investor and you want to put your money somewhere, you really ought to take a look at cryptocurrency and look at look at what the reward can be on that and what it can do to change your life. You have to make that decision, though. I can't tell you to do it. Nobody else can tell you to do it. You got to be right with it because don't be blaming anybody else for your decisions. You know, you are the one responsible for this this thing that you're controlling, this body, this avatar. It's up to you. It's all in here. It's all you. So you better trust yourself. Just get out of the vampire casino, though. You know, do something else. All right. Hope you have a wonderful Thursday. Love you all tonight, this afternoon. 
4 p.m. Central Time on Blind Dave's YouTube channel. Check out the link below. Subscribe to it. Hit that notification bell. Hit the thumbs up. You know, when the videos come out, we're going to hash it out. We're going to hash out some crypto things. Talk about it and uh, see if we can come to some uh, some answers on some of these some of these questions that you might have about cryptocurrency. Get in the chat, ask questions, and we got some smart people in there, much smarter than I am when it comes to these things, much more well-researched. And, um, you know, let's uh, let's see if we can hash it out and answer some questions for y'all. 4 p.m. Central Time on Blind Days YouTube channel. See the link below. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Point the finger at the camera. There we go. Get out of the vampire casino and trust yourself. It's all inside. You've got all the answers. Trust yourself and know that. All right. Have a wonderful day.